Hi Lydia, once it's Alice, I'm of the stars. This is the twelfth and last in a series of videos on the topic, the spiritual powers of omniscience, omnipresence, and omnipotence on earth today, things to look out for, by Alice B. Claggett. This, the twelfth in the series, is entitled, Ascension is the Time of Choosing. The introduction to this video mentions the law of one, the raw material. And I'd just like to, to say that that's a favorite reference of mine. And uh, it can be found at this URL, https colon slash slash www.lawofone.info That's the Law of One, the raw material, which is, which is available completely online, which is just great, and also in book form through book publishers. Now back to the text. Ascension is the time of choosing. As the law of one, the raw material terms it, it is a time of harvest, of polarization to light or dark. It is a time of choosing for the soul, the question being, will I pursue the path of service to self or the path of service to others? Now is the time of choosing. In spiritual groups with great spiritual powers, one might anticipate, as the ascension proceeds, very diverse choices by the members of each group. Some will choose to stick with their body of dark and their soul wounding. These people want to continue experiencing the duality experiment. Others will choose the experience of the body of light, which will lead to an understanding of the fifth dimension and of Christed and Buddhic consciousness. The dividing line is ego. How does this choice of dark or of light occur? The dividing line is ego, the sense of little self as opposed to the sense of the great cosmic mind of God. As the Bible puts it, Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. Better is it to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. That's a quote from Proverbs 16, verses 18 and 19, from the King James Version of the Bible, which is public domain. So from this biblical quote, um, my own understanding, my own thought is that the haughty spirit, the pride of which they speak, are qualities of ego, of the sense of oneself and of the desire for service to self. The desire to serve oneself without paying too much attention to the common good, to, to the need to serve others, other beings in this creation. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. They're saying, it seems to me, that the choice to go with the ego in service to self, the, 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 the pride of individuation, the pride of individuality, are likely to result in a few tumbles for the people that choose this way during the ascension process. Everyone knows that when we choose that, then we are in for the duality play for another quite bit number of years and so there'll be ups and downs they'll be they'll be rising up and falling down for quite some time and that's what we have chosen 
if we choose service to self. Then the second verse speaks of a humble spirit who, who congregates with people who, who feel lowly rather than a proud spirit who, who gets rich by associating with proud people. And so I feel that this might be saying, in the, in the Ascension Choice context, it might be saying, stick with service to others, stick with uh, the healing of the planet, with the healing of other people, with the facilitation of the light descending to earth, stick with the desire to help other people. This is the humility of spirit rather than the pride of spirit. And, and for those of you that choose the path of service to others during this ascension process, I think you'll find out that it's a wonderful path, that it brings happiness, plenty, joy, and peace, not just to the people you help, but to, to your own heart. That's how I feel about it. The fate of those who achieve omniscience omnipresence and omnipotence and fail to achieve non-attachment. If the spiritual adept attains the powers of omniscience, omnipresence and omnipotence and fails to achieve a state of non-attachment from the senses, then during this time of choosing, during the ascension process, the most likely outcome will be graduation to an astral purgatory world or hell world experience in our own or in another constellation, as apparently has been the case with Adolf Hitler, Taras Bulba, Genghis Khan, and Rasputin. I got this latter information from the Law of One, the raw material, which I referenced a little higher up in this video. That's the information about those four people. And to that, that I attach the notion that the same might happen to others during this time of choosing. Probably not too many others, just a few. For more on this, um, you can go to my website, Awakening with Planet Earth, to the blog entitled Dealing with the Disincarnate Gods. And when you get there, search powers of nature, and you'll find out quite a bit about it. Then I have another blog to recommend to you in the same website, Awakening with Planet Earth, and that is entitled, Are Antisocial Personalities Soulless Men? With comments by Alice B. Claggett. Um, that one describes the fate of Adolf Hitler, Taras Bulba, Genghis Khan and Rasputin, according to the Law of One, the raw material. Let's go on to the next section. On attaining Christ consciousness during the ascension process. If the spiritual adept attains the powers of omniscience, omnipresence, and omnipotence, and is able to rise above ego into a sense of Christed and Buddhic love and light, then he will participate in the experience of ascension here on earth. If the leader of a spiritual group doesn't rise past his ego and turn to Christed and Buddhic consciousness, to God, to Source, during this pivotal ascension process, then the members of his group will be trapped beneath his egoic shield, unable to ascend that will stay with him in a purgatory world or hell world experience, whether on earth or elsewhere in the universe, an experience akin to that of burning in fire, as aptly expressed both by the school of theosophy and by Christian religions. As the Bible puts it, an ungodly man diggeth up evil, and in his lips there is a burning fire. 
That's Proverbs 16, verse 27, from the King James Version of the Bible, which is public domain. If we are a member of a spiritual group whose leader has not risen above ego, then we must separate our consciousness from that group so as to avoid samskaric infection. I wrote this section because I had some concerns about some of the followers of that group who seemed to be not fitting in as well as others with the astral commotion that was going on. It, the astral commotion after I left the group seemed to be centered on certain of the people and not other, others of the people. And I thought, it, you know, if they were able, if they were not too fearful, they might want to leave that group and proceed along on their own, certain people, just a few. Now we have a new section entitled The Great Invocation of Dual Kul. We who choose the path of service to others must turn from our own ego to the light of Christ's love for all humankind. A very good tool to attain this is the prayer called The Great Invocation which beseeches that our small and petty will and heart and mind be lifted into alignment with the great will and heart and mind of God. The words to this prayer may be found online at a site entitled The Great Invocation through Alice Bailey in Theosophy Wiki at present, the URL is https colon slash slash theosophy dot w i k i forward slash e n forward slash capital G R E A T underscore capital I N V O C A T I O N. The next section and the final section is entitled Tom Kenyon's Athos Meditation. I really love that meditation. In me, from my own psychic stance, from my intuition, I gathered it was burning off the the impurities in my body of light. It was helping to change my dark body to a body fully of light. And I played it over and over again for a long time. I'm not advising you should do that. I think you should follow the directions exactly there on the website. And I will give you a little more information on this wonderful tool provided by Tom Kenyon. You can find it on his website, https colon slash slash tomkenyon.com. The title that you're looking for there is The Athos, that's A E T H O S, and Non hyphen dual states of consciousness. A Hathor planetary message through Tom Kenyon. It's really wonderful. I love the Hathors, and I love Tom Kenyon's channeling of the Hathors. It's terrific. So I hope you have a chance to roam around that website. There are just so many wonderful tools in it for uplifting the consciousness during the process of ascension. Well, that's the end of the series, dear ones. And I have this as a final blessing. May God bless you and keep you safe and be with you through all your days.